Wow, oh, there's a really nice one. And just like that, we're seeing leaves that haven't seen the light of day in 15 million years. That's right. We're cracking open 15 million year old time capsules on the hunt for dino plant DNA. This and an Idaho baked potato next on Plants Are Cool Too. Animals are cuddly, animals are cute. You could put a kitten in a three piece suit. But could an animal make its own food? Could an animal feed the whole world? Could an animal help you get a girl? Plants are cool too. Plants are cool too. Plants are cool too. Major funding provided by the David Burpee Endowment at Bucknell University, with additional support from the University of Idaho and the Botanical Society of America. This is the forest of present-day northern Idaho, and one would think that these big giant cedar trees behind me have been here for an eternity. But the truth is, even though they're probably about 2,000 years old, they're actually latecomers to this part of the world. In 1972, Francis Keenbaum was expanding the racetrack on his property with a bulldozer when he came across what turned out to be one of the most impressive plant fossil deposits in the world. The family still owns and maintains the property and the racetrack today. We're headed to the small community of Clarkia, Idaho, a town of less than 100 people and thousands upon thousands of incredible fossils. Waiting for us there is Dr. Dave Tank and his team from the University of Idaho, who will guide us on a journey to the past in a time machine built from the remains of the ancient forests that grew in these parts millions of years ago, in a time when even the Arctic Circle was warm enough for a summer vacation. Two years ago, Dave told me that this was a place I had to see, and I'm finally here to find out what the fuss is all about. Hey, Dave Tank. Chris, great to see you. You too. How yeah. you been? Great. Glad you made it. Yeah. So what do you got over here? What do you what do you have to show us? Well, this is a 15 million year old fossil forest. So uh, 15 million year old trees right here in the rocks in front of us. That's correct. Yeah. So I split a couple open a few minutes ago and I don't know, you know what that is? It looks like bald cypress. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, taxodium. So well, this is a tree we're only going to find right now in the southeastern U.S., places like Mississippi, that's Louisiana. That's correct, yeah. yeah. So this is a place that's much warmer, wetter, and so here in Idaho, it was warmer and wetter 15 million years ago. And there's the evidence of that right here with that's this correct. species. Do we see that in some of the other things that we find here? I mean, is it a, a trend? Absolutely. So yeah. let's split a couple more open and see what else we can find. Okay. Oh, there oh, you yeah, go. There. So that's a little bit of a fragment of a leaf, but can you recognize what that is? I don't know. What is that? A big, geez, that is a giant leaf. What is it? That's another platanus. That's platanus. Really? That's a big yeah. sycamore leaf. That's right. Huh. So this so here's would be a little bit smaller that... one that I found a little bit earlier. Okay. And these would have grown along the edges of the river that was here at that time or around the edges of the river? That's right. This uh, okay. is a riparian species. Yep. And so originally this was a, a river valley here that was eventually buried by this Miocene lake. Okay, and so what we have here ago. are sort of like the impressions, almost like footprints in, in, in the sediment, right? That's what we're seeing here? That's exactly right. Okay. So this is this type of preservation, but yeah. what I really wanted to show you here is what we've got right behind oh, us. Let's check it out. Huh, so this rock looks a little bit different than the stuff we were just looking at. Yeah, this is a different type of preservation that we have in this rock. And okay. so what we have here is really exquisite preservation that makes this site particularly unique see if i can get this open there we go holy so these look here's the impressions that we just saw but these look almost like real leaves these are the actual leaf 15 million year old leaf compressed in this uh in this rock matrix that's a real leaf 15 that's the, million years old sitting there in between these layers that's the real leaf and i don't know if you noticed we saw some color originally yeah. and we can see it starting to oxidize right here so right now it's starting to blacken up and so this is original fall color or so, close to it so what i'm looking at the autumn colors of these leaves as they stood 15 million years ago. That's right. And yeah. you open up the rock and they immediately begin to turn black as they're exposed to the oxygen. That's right. So let's see if we can find some more. This section has a lot of really nice color in it. 
Look at all these leaves. These are real leaves. Yeah. So a couple interesting things. This is actually an extinct genus that was described a few years ago. Okay. So no longer even anywhere. No longer anywhere. Earth. And here it is represented in this deposit alongside things we're still seeing today in other parts of the world. That's right. How is it possible that a leaf has been preserved for 15 million years inside of this rock and still looks like it just fell off the tree? Come on over here. I'll show you. So 15 million years ago in this valley, the St. Mary's River was pretty much in the same place that it is today. Mm -hmm. And a basalt, volcanic basalt flow, dammed that river and it created a big reservoir. And so where we are right here would be about 300 feet beneath the surface of an ancient lake. Wow. So we have this sort of volcanic activity and the, 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 the hot rock that comes out of that closed off the river and sort of made this dam. That's exactly right. And then yeah. all that water backed up behind it. All that water backed up behind it yeah. and it created a very deep and very cold lake. Okay. And so as the forest that's around it and the vegetation that was along the river got buried in this water, the preservation happened really quickly because it's deep, cold, not much oxygen toward the bottom. Yeah. And that's how we get this really exquisite preservation that we were that we were just looking at. So all those leaves that sank to the bottom, because there's no oxygen, they can't decompose, and they kind of just get preserved. And then all this sediment that washes in as part of the lake covers them up. Yep. And that gives us what we have today. Yeah, and you can see a lot of that in the layering that we have here. And so you take out any of these layers, and what you're, you know, what you see is you split these open, and you see all these layers and layers and layers yeah. of, of leaves like we've been seeing. These yellow bands here are these volcanic ashes. So these volcanic activity is happening the whole, you know, yeah. throughout the period here. Right. So we're, we're basically oh, yeah. sitting towards the bottom of what was a big deposit of a bunch of sediment. That's right. And we can actually yeah. track the change in vegetation from the bottom of that deposit early on when it was riparian yeah. to the top of that deposit where it was more, as the lake filled in over this time, it was more of a swampy situation. So you're there. saying based on the leaves that we find, That's right. we yeah. can sort of say something about what the habitat and the environment was like. At a, at a given time as the lake changed. And we can actually see the way the forest changed through time. Yeah, that's a really amazing thing about this site. And that was actually the dissertation research of a colleague of mine, who Dr. Bill Rember, who worked on this site for about 35 years. He's actually at another site today, and he's developed a technique where we can take those leaves and actually lift them off of the, foss, off of the rock. Uh, to study as a biological specimen. You think he'd show it to us? Yeah, he's totally willing to show it. Let's go check it out. All right. Hello, Bill. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Just fine. He was extracting a block of compression fossils from one of his pits when we arrived. There's, There's an oak right there <laughs> with green. See the green color? Amazing. Yeah, I can, can see, see, the, see green, the green, dude. That's insane. <laughs> Dr. Rember is a geologist and paleobotanist at the University of Idaho. He's been working these sites since he was a graduate student and has since become the world's leading authority on the Clarkia fossil beds. Bill has developed a technique that breaks the bond between the leaf and the rock. Once he moves the treated specimen to a water bath, the leaf immediately begins to lift off the rock. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's Another still a lot of green color there, too. Yeah, there is. He then coaxes the leaf onto a small screen, then onto acetate sheets so we can get a closer look. There you are, Chris. Can I hold it? Wow. <laughs> yeah. You can see the, uh, so that's insect damage up around the top. Yeah. Look at the colors. I mean, so Bill, th these are a lot more than, than just your standard fossils, aren't they? What, what, what's so different about what we're seeing here? These are the actual leaves, and you're looking at the color that they were when they fell off the tree in the fall 15 million years ago. So what, what can you do with this kind of a, a, a fossil deposit that you can't do with, like, sort of your standard fossils? Well, one of the things we can do is look at the stomatal apparatus and... The more carbon dioxide there is in the air, the less stomatal apparatus the plant produces. Yeah. Some species, that's not necessarily, there's, it's kind of a baby science now, yep. so we're, we're not knowing for sure, but we can get a uh, idea of how much carbon dioxide there was in the atmosphere when these plants grew 15 million years ago. That might give us an idea of where we're going if global warming happens here. 
the world today because this was certainly a global warming period. Uh -huh. There's a peak in the Miocene that's much warmer than prior and after. Okay. So by looking closely at, at, at the real sort of openings in these leaves that would allow for gas exchange in another leaf, we can say something about what the atmosphere was like when these grew. That's right. This really is a special site out here. This is different than a lot of other places in the world, isn't it? Yes, it is, because it has uh, three different qualities, any one of which would make it a very good site. Uh -huh. There is excellent preservation, as we see here. Yeah. There is tremendous diversity. I have probably 150 different species of plant material here. Yeah. And we have large numbers of blocks, 50 by 30 centimeters, may have 50 separate leaves on it. Wow. So we have diversity, numbers, and preservation. Oh. Any one of which would be a good fossil. But site. you've got we them all, all in three combination are right here, here yeah. in one spot. I got to tell you, Dave, I, I can't even believe what I'm seeing here. Right? These are the actual leaves. Yeah, it's an tree. amazing process to watch those come off the rock like that. Something like this, I look at this and I say, okay, that's an oak, right? But there are going to be lots of things that, that we pull off of the rocks in these sites that don't look like things that are around today. Yeah, there's right? a lot of leaves that are pretty nondescript and it's hard to tell with just a leaf standing there without any flowers or fruits. You know, what is yeah, this Yeah, so thing? I mean, is there a way we could figure out what they are? Yeah, actually in the early 90s when DNA sequencing was just getting going, there were a couple of papers that were published about extracting DNA and actually sequencing pieces of DNA from some of these fossils. And so what this entails is using a clean lab that doesn't have any other plant tissue in it or mm -hmm. any contaminants, uh, really making sure you're not contaminating anything by yeah. having uh, suits on and, and gloved up and making sure that you know, you're not introducing any contaminants yeah. to, the, to the process and then doing this all in that very controlled environment. Yeah. Um, and then the techniques for actually extracting DNA have just vastly improved in the last 20 years. And yeah. so we're getting better at it, it's getting easier, um, and so we want to see if this is going gonna, is gonna to work with these. Yeah. So I, I guess the point here is that getting DNA this old couldn't have been done before we found things like this. Yeah, so this is one of the few sites in the world where we have actual biological specimens that we can pull out of the ground, know the date of, and be able to potentially get DNA out of. So yeah, no way we could do this without this type of preservation. It hasn't really been possible. It hasn't been believable, and we want to make this believable. I mean, yeah. we, want to, we want to show that, yeah, you can do this, and this is real, and convince the ancient DNA community that this is a real thing. Yeah, well, good luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Preliminary results are looking positive, but you know, we'll see what happens with it. It's a, it's, a, it's a long process, and we have to split a lot of fossils before we get that one that really uh, that works well. Previous studies have been able to recover really old DNA uh, between half a million and a million year old, but this is 15 million, 15 million years old, so this is truly amazing. And so we're really excited to be, you know, the people working here and see if we're able to recover this ancient DNA. So in the end, we would like to prove that you can, in fact, get DNA from these leaf samples in Clarkia. Yeah. And I mean, imagine just having really ancient DNA that you know it's 15 million year old. To be able to say with confidence that this is 15 million year old DNA, it, it's an unreal experience. Yeah. It's uh, pretty, pretty uh, spectacular to be able to, every time you open a block, see these leaves, these 15 million year old leaves right before your eyes and watch them change from green or red to black and that's that's pretty spectacular. It's crazy. I love this site. It's amazing. Yeah. Dave, thanks so much for having us out here. This has been amazing. Two years in the making and it was totally worth it. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. You gonna eat that baked potato? You gonna play that banjo? <laughs> <laughs>